Hello, my name is Don Metzger. This video shows how to perform signal analysis on multiple channel devices like the Analog Devices AD9081 MXFE chip. Here's an overview of the video. We'll first talk about the problem, which is signal analysis with multiple channel chips. Our solution to that is interprocess communications. Then we'll move on and do some actual measurements. We'll show a measurement setup and the waveforms that we're using, and we'll run with quick multi-transceiver, and then we'll do the signal analysis using quick receiver over interprocess communication channels. So the problem that we're trying to address is that analog devices is now producing chips with four or sometimes eight transmit and receive channels. And we have applications that handle those, like Quick Multi-Transceiver. And we have applications like Quick Receiver that do complex signal analysis on them. But how do we blend these two different apps together? Multiple channels and high-level signal analysis of the waveforms that are in there. So the approach that we decided to take to this problem was to use interprocess communications to move the data from one application to another. On Windows, all processes have their own memory spaces. IPC is a way of sharing data between processes on a single computer. Uh, Windows has an object called a file mapping object that allows processes to share some memory. It's one of the fastest ways of moving data between different processes on a computer. So our approach was to use IPC to move data gathered using the multi-channel application Quick Multi-Transceiver to the analysis application Quick Receiver. Here's the measurement setup we'll be using to illustrate the interprocess communications. This is an analog device's 9081 MXFE eval board, the blue board, hosted on a Xilinx ZCU102 host board. The outputs of each DAC are looped back to the appropriate ADC input, so DAC0 to ADC0, DAC1 to ADC1, and so forth. I've already generated some waveforms using Quick Generator software. The first channel will be doing a DVBS signal, 32 APSK at 100 megasymbols a second. The second channel will be doing an ordinary 64 QAM at 62.5 megasymbols a second. Third channel will do a chirping signal, like a radar signal, and the fourth channel will just do a two-tone signal. The AD9081 is accepting input and output data at 250 megasamples per second. All right, so I've opened up Quick Multi-Transceiver. First of all, let's tell the software what we're talking to here, we're going to talk to a AD9081 at that IP address. And then let's go over here and choose our transmitter files. So wherever uh, the waveforms are that you want to play for each of these, uh, you go through and browse to that and select that file. So these are the four different files that we have created for the waveforms that we'll be playing with the four different DACs on the 9081. Then let's go up here and do the 9081 control. And we're going to capture 64,800 samples per ADC. We're running the 250 mega sample per second mode. The transmitters, uh, we want each of those to be on at 1 gigahertz. And then the receivers, we want each of those to be on at 1 gigahertz. And then up here, um, under Windows, we've already set up the windows this way, but we're going to have four windows with these different windows uh, selected there. All right, now we can just go hit the start button. So there are our four signals being transmitted by the DACs and being received by the ADCs. Over here, we've got that 
DVBS signal, here's that 64 QAM signal, here's our chirping signal, you can see it down here. Maybe I'll stop this. You can see the chirping signal in the um, spectrogram. And then finally, our last signal over here is just a two-tone signal. So this is all well and good. We can play these diverse types of waveforms. We can see the quality of the 809081 chip to transmit and receive. But well, what happens if we want to do a DMOD on the DVBS signal at the same time that we're playing all of these waveforms? Well, that's where interprocess communications comes in. So if you go up here to the file menu and you go down to interprocess data, and we have four different links available. So let's set up IPC link 0 to be channel 1. This is channel 1, all of these data's over here are channel 1. Let's in IPC link 1, let's put up all the channel 2 data uh, into that one. All right. Then I start up the quick receiver application. Quick receiver has the ability to get data from various places, either files or directly from instruments. In this case, we're going to tell it to pick up its data from an inner process communication link. So we click that on the toolbar and then we go under the file menu to inner process data and we say pick up your data from IPC link 0. So that's the DVBS signal that's over there. Let's go back over to the quick multi-transceiver program, start the data flowing again, hop back to quick receiver and tell it to start going and boom, there we are. There's our 32 APSK DVBS2 waveform that is being captured by quick multi-transceiver, but it's being analyzed by quick receiver. We can also stop the processing on quick receiver, go over here and change it to inner process link number one which is the 64 QAM waveform. So here we have to go and tell it you're going to do 64 QAM at 62.5 mega symbols a second and hit the go and automatically we're now doing the signal analysis for the data on channel 2 which is being sent by link number 1. But the really cool thing to do is to take advantage of the unique features of the uh, multi-transceiver software and the multi-receiver software at the same time. So I'm going to stop both of these and then I'm going to put this into summing receiver mode. So I'm going to take our uh, DVBS signal and sum that in and then I'm going to take our chirping waveform here, which is receiver number three, and I want to sum that in with just a summing receiver. And I'm going to drop this amplitude about 25 dB uh, in the chirping waveform as it goes into the summing receiver. And so this last column is the summing data down here, and when we turn this on, now this is the summation of our DVBS waveform and the chirping waveform and they're being added together and we can't see that in the spectrum or in the spectrogram um, but you'll be able to see the effect when we get into quick receiver so let's take quick receiver over here oh, one more step we have to make sure that we are outputting our sum data so IPC link 2, let's make that the summing output. Okay, so now we're putting out this data, we're putting out this data, and we're also putting out this data. We can choose from any of those to analyze over in Quick Receiver. We went back to the 32 APSK waveform, so let's 
go to our DVB and there's all of the setup for that. We hop back to the DVB mode and for the IPC we're taking link number two now. And all of a sudden there's our waveform that we're getting. You can see the effect of the chirp on each of the symbol constellation points. And if this was uh, real communications that we were trying to do, we'd probably be okay with this level of interference. But if I go over here and I up the amount of interference by increasing how much um, signal the chirp is in the final sum, let's say minus 20 dB, not minus 25, then over here in Quick Receiver you can see the immediate effect and that amount of interference on constellation points that's probably gonna start driving our forward error correction uh, a little crazy to try and recover from all those symbol errors. So by using this uh, interprocess communication approach we can create some really interesting demonstrations of signal processing and look at the uh, performance of different chips in different scenarios taking advantage of multiple transceiver operation as well as signal analysis of individual channels. If you want more information visit us online at quicksystems.com or send us an email at sales at quicksystems.com. Have a good day.